Joining us on the Informed for what is part two, a special interview, a chance to get to know a bit more about this man who, who has had a fantastic uh, journey through uh, Holden and also through HSV. Uh, John Crennan, uh, there's some outstanding news that's only just come through uh, and it concerns what happens next. Holden, I believe, has uh, got one year left to compete in this country as a, as a brand and then unfortunately we're going to see that brand disappear from, uh, uh, from all our uh, normal channels. Is that correct? Yes, well, the Holden have withdrawn all their support from motorsport effective this last race. Um, and, and next year, the teams that are running the Holden Commodore are on their own. There's no financial assistance, et cetera, et cetera, because the, they, they really want the Holden brand to conclude and finish and, and wash up um, uh, immediately after Bathurst. But certainly the, the, the people who run the, the supercars um, organization have, have been somewhat concerned that that there may not be a successor so next year is really a, a filling year while the commodore runs it'll still be competitive it'll still do a good job etc cetera, etc cetera, but it bears no relevance to the marketplace and and there's been a, a a lot of concern about what's the next step for supercars and will, will the business be able to sustain etc and and there's a, there's a new program called gen 3 that the the, the technical gurus have been working on to be able to try and uh, have a platform that opens it up to more manufacturers to get more people involved, et cetera, other than just the Mustang. And the first one of those they've achieved is an announcement this morning that in General Motors, uh, the, the whole name goes away completely. There's a new name coming to town called GMSV or GM Special Vehicles. They're, they're, they're going to be importing um, Silverado trucks um, and the, the new Corvette uh, model, et cetera, in, in very, very modest volume, but there will be a, a modest General Motors presence in Australia now that GMH, uh, if, if you like, has gone. And rather surprised everybody this morning that they announced that, that they will race the Camaro uh, come 2022. Um, Against against the Mustang, and hopefully they may have one other one other make or model. It, it, it could be the Kia Singer or something like that, etc. But yeah, so the, the GM, whilst the whole name will go, the GM name will continue in motorsport in Australia, and no doubt that's going to be the the the, the marketing tool for assisting the sales of the Silverado and Corvette models to give GM some presence still in Australia. Uh, being the marketing man that you are, the salesman that you are, I bet uh, you'll, you would be the first to jump on the phrase, the general is back and not going anywhere else. Yeah? Can you see it? Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's, I'm sure there's, there's, these days there's a lot smarter brains than me, but uh, <laughs> they, 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 they will no doubt be um, doing this. But, but look, they have come into a, an enormous amount of industry criticism for the manner in which they handled their exit. It was a shock ex exit by any standard. The dealers were treated very, very poorly, and there's a, there was a massive... A, a massive kerfuffle over the compensation they got and there's still a lot of feeling uh, around and certainly the Australian Automobile Dealer Association um, are pretty cranky with Holden and NGM in the manner in which they sort of withdrew overnight um, and, and, and so GM are taking their, are taking their re entry in this very niche manner. I think very gently and making sure uh, they're, they're going to await the outcome of a Senate inquiry that looked very deeply into the hows and whys and wheres of what General Motors did. Um, and, and, and is it a phoenixing program, you know, where that, they're killing that company to let another one come up? So there's, there's some, there's some, there's some uh, fragile work to be done, I think. So I don't think the marketing drums are going to beat too hard yet until such time as this, uh, the findings of the uh, Senate committee uh, are tabled. It is a very sad time. If you've been part of the motorsport industry, and you certainly have from the very early days, it must be very, very sad to have seen this tremendous journey, this tremendous excitement that's been generated for year after year after year, 
and to see it sl slowly, silently put to bed only for a new vehicle to come in and, and a, new, uh, a new direction for the motorsport industry. I hope uh, that uh, the people still understand that you can win on, on, on Sunday and not necessarily buy it on Monday. Yeah, and look, there's been a major shift in motorsport, and I think it's worldwide as well. That that the 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 car on the showroom that they that they raced and that had full manufacturing support, um, it has moved from that in the in the last ten years. That the manufacturer's involvement has not been anywhere near as profound um, as as what it was in the past, where they where where it was probably their number one marketing tool. It was probably the the biggest connector and differentiator from every, anyone else in the marketplace to be able to develop that passion and that interest, et cetera, and the whole dealer organization and the fan base really, you know, just looked forward as much to the car race on the weekend as what they may have, the, the football, because, you know, what was racing was the car that was in their garage and they were, they were attached to it. So the, it's not, not so much a manufacturer's game these days. It's, it's more team versus team. Um, and 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 they're not promoting to anywhere near the same extent that the brand behind it. It's it's a, it's a driver thing, it's a team thing, and it's a sponsor thing that tends to be the one that's that the marketers are, are concentrating on more now. So, um, no, yeah, but to, to, to just go back to what you said, George, it, it was a terrible day. You know, I, I call it seventeen two. You know, just like 9/11, um, 17/2 was the day that General Motors announced they're pulling out of pulling out of town. It was just, to me, uh, you know, with my father having started there on the first day in 1926, and me having had a continuous involvement in one way, shape, or form all that time, it was you know, like having an arm cut off. It was just bizarre. Now it's part of your DNA. I can imagine it, uh, John Crennan. Yeah. It's been an absolute yeah. wonderful opportunity to take this journey with you. Uh, we certainly hope uh, it's, uh, it's brought back some wonderful memories for you. It certainly enriched us. We've been motorsport fans, as you understand, uh, through my father. I, I couldn't miss it. Yeah, and for that. us, the grand final every year was Bathurst. And uh, it was Holden yep. versus Ford. Whether it was Lounsey, whether it was Brock, whether it was Bond, what a time it was for everyone. John Crennan, thank you for helping us um, get back and remember some of those golden times when HSV was one of the biggest brands in Australia. John Crennan, thank you. Thank you, George. It was a marvellous interview. I appreciated it a lot and it was a fantastic set of questions. Thank you. Thank you. John Crennan on The Informer. What a joy to go through that. How much fun. Was